Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today channel Dan Shreyaun is going to tell you about English short story by Aesop. 126. The Stag, the Sheep, and the Wolf. One day a stag came to a sheep and asked her to lend him a measure of wheat. The sheep knew him for a very swift runner, who could easily take himself out of reach, were he so inclined. So she asked him if he knew someone who would answer for him. Yes, yes, answered the stag confidently, the wolf has promised to be my surety. The wolf, exclaimed the sheep indignantly, do you think I would trust you on such security? I know the wolf, he takes what he wants and runs off with it without paying. As for you, you can use your legs so well that I should have little chance of collecting the dead if I had to catch you for it. Moral. Two blacks do not make a white. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe, like and share to channel Dan Shreyaun in order to get more videos. Thank you. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today channel Dan Shreyaun is going to tell you about English short story by Aesop. 127. The Animals and the Plague. Once upon a time a severe plague raged among the animals. Many died, and those who lived were so ill, that they cared for neither food nor drink, and dragged themselves about listlessly. No longer could a fat young hen tempt master fox to dinner, nor a tender lamb rouse greedy Sir Wolf's appetite. At last the lion decided to call a council. When all the animals were gathered together he arose and said, Dear friends, I believe the gods have sent this plague upon us as a punishment for our sins. Therefore, the most guilty one of us must be offered in sacrifice. Perhaps we may thus obtain forgiveness and cure for all. I will confess all my sins first. I admit that I have been very greedy and have devoured many sheep. They had done me no harm. I have eaten goats and bulls and stags. To tell the truth, I even ate up a shepherd now and then. Now, if I am the most guilty, I am ready to be sacrificed. But I think it best that each one confess his sins as I have done. Then we can decide in all justice who is the most guilty. Your Majesty, said the fox, you are too good. Can it be a crime to eat sheep, such stupid mutton heads? No, no, Your Majesty. You have done them great honor by eating them up. And so far as shepherds are concerned, we all know they belong to that puny race that pretends to be our masters. All the animals applauded the fox loudly. Then, though the tiger, the bear, the wolf, and all the savage beasts recited the most wicked deeds, all were excused and made to appear very saint-like and innocent. It was now the ass's turn to confess. I remember, he said guiltily, that one day as I was passing a field belonging to some priests, I was so tempted by the tender grass and my hunger, that I could not resist nibbling a bit of it. I had no right to do it, I admit, a great uproar among the beasts interrupted him. Here was the culprit who had brought misfortune on all of them. What a horrible crime it was to eat grass that belonged to someone else. It was enough to hang anyone for, much more an ass. Immediately they all fell upon him, the wolf in the lead, and soon had made an end to him, sacrificing him to the gods then and there, and without the formality of an altar. Moral, the weak are made to suffer for the misdeeds of the powerful. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe like and share to channel Dan Shreyaun in order to get more videos. Thank you. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today channel Dan Shreyaun is going to tell you about English short story by Aesop. 128. The Shepherd and the Lion. A shepherd, counting his sheep one day, discovered that a number of them were missing. Much irritated, he very loudly and boastfully declared that he would catch the thief and punish him as he deserved. The shepherd suspected a wolf of the deed and so set out toward a rocky region among the hills, where there were caves infested by wolves. But before starting out he made a vow to Jupiter that if he would help him find the thief he would offer a fat calf as a sacrifice. The shepherd searched a long time without finding any wolves, but just as he was passing near a large cave on the mountainside, a huge lion stalked out, carrying a sheep. In great terror the shepherd fell on his knees. Alas, O Jupiter, man does not know what he asks. To find the thief I offered to sacrifice a fat calf. Now I promise you a full-grown bull, if you but make the thief go away. We are often not so eager for what we seek, after we have found it. Moral. Do not foolishly ask for things that would bring ruin if they were granted. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe, like and share to channel Dan Shreyaun in order to get more videos. Thank you.
Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today channel Dan Shreyan is going to tell you about English short story by Aesop. 129. The Bees and Wasps and the Hornet. A store of honey had been found in a hollow tree, and the wasps declared positively that it belonged to them. The bees were just as sure that the treasure was theirs. The argument grew very pointed, and it looked as if the affair could not be settled without a battle, when at last, with much good sense, they agreed to let a judge decide the matter. So they brought the case before the hornet, justice of the peace in that part of the woods. When the judge called the case, witnesses declared that they had seen certain winged creatures in the neighborhood of the hollow tree, who hummed loudly, and whose bodies were striped, yellow and black, like bees. Counsel for the wasps immediately insisted that this description fitted his clients exactly. Such evidence did not help Judge Hornet to any decision, so he adjourned court for six weeks to give him time to think it over. When the case came up again, both sides had a large number of witnesses. An ant was first to take the stand, and was about to be cross-examined, when a wise old bee addressed the court. Your Honor, he said, the case has now been pending for six weeks. If it is not decided soon, the honey will not be fit for anything. I move that the bees and the wasps be both instructed to build a honeycomb. Then we shall soon see to whom the honey really belongs. The wasps protested loudly. Wise Judge Hornet quickly understood why they did so. They knew they could not build a honeycomb and fill it with honey. It is clear, said the judge, who made the comb and who could not have made it. The honey belongs to the bees. Moral. Ability proves itself by deeds. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe, like and share to channel Dan Shreyan in order to get more videos. Thank you. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today channel Dan Shreyan is going to tell you about English short story by Aesop. 130. The Lark and Her Young Ones. A lark made her nest in a field of young wheat. As the days passed, the wheat stalks grew tall and the young birds, too, grew in strength. Then one day, when the ripe golden grain waved in the breeze, the farmer and his son came into the field. This wheat is now ready for reaping, said the farmer. We must call in our neighbors and friends to help us harvest it. The young larks in their nest close by were much frightened, for they knew they would be in great danger if they did not leave the nest before the reapers came. When the mother lark returned with food for them, they told her what they had heard. Do not be frightened, children, said the mother lark. If the farmer said he would call in his neighbors and friends to help him do his work, this wheat will not be reaped for a while yet. A few days later, the wheat was so ripe, that when the wind shook the stalks, a hail of wheat grains came rustling down on the young lark's heads. If this wheat is not harvested at once, said the farmer, we shall lose half the crop. We cannot wait any longer for help from our friends. Tomorrow we must set to work, ourselves. When the young larks told their mother what they had heard that day, she said, then we must be off at once. When a man decides to do his own work and not depend on anyone else, then you may be sure there will be no more delay. There was much fluttering and trying out of wings that afternoon, and at sunrise next day, when the farmer and his son cut down the grain, they found an empty nest. Moral. Self-help is the best help. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe, like and share to channel Dan Shreyan in order to get more videos. Thank you.